Good evening and happy Wednesday. I am so excited to be here today. Uh, we have two of our HBCUs that are going to share their admissions process with you. Uh, we have Alcorn and we also have Lamar Owens College. And right now we're going to start with Miss Chanel. I'm so glad that she is here with us today. And um, she is going to tell us about the admission process and how you can get to her school and information that we may not know. So thank you and welcome for coming. Hey, Ms. Robinson. Thank you so much. Again, my name is Ms. Chenault. I am an admissions counselor with Lamorne on College located in Memphis, Tennessee. I am going to take you through the admissions process, tell you all about the great things that are happening at Lamorne on College and how you can be a part of the magic happening on Walker Avenue. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so again, like I said, my name is Ms. Chenault and I am with Lamorne on College located in Memphis, Tennessee. First, I do have a short video that I'm going to share with you all that's going to tell you a little bit about the history of our college, if you've never heard of us before, and where we are moving right now in present day. Education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. Nelson Mandela. The truth of these words is manifest in the transformed lives of the students and alumni of historic Lemoyne Owen College. Lemoyne Owen is the heart of the Soulsville USA Renaissance community in Memphis, Tennessee. Surrounding its beautiful campus are the Stax Museum, the Stax Music Academy, elementary and charter schools, historic churches and businesses, and the stately Elmwood Cemetery. As the only historically black college in Memphis, Lemoyne Owen College has educated local and national leaders who, with their passion and presence, have made an indelible impact on their respective communities and touched countless lives. Consider Marion Barry, former mayor of Washington, D.C., Willie W. Harrington, Memphis's first African American superintendent of Memphis City Schools and the first African American elected mayor of Memphis, Dr. Benjamin Lawson Hooks first African-American appointed to the Federal Communications Commission and former NAACP National Executive Director, Judge, and Minister, Lois DeBerry, former House Speaker pro tempore and one of the longest serving members in the history of the Tennessee State House of Representatives, and G.E. Patterson, founding pastor, Temple of Deliverance, Bishop, Church of God and Christ, all history makers, all Lemoyne Owen College Magicians. This legacy was forged in faith and struggle, and the roots of the college run deep, all the way back to the American Civil War, to the year 1862, one year prior to the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. The battle to abolish slavery was nearly won, and members of the American Missionary Association, in their wisdom and through their faith, new education was the key to equality and the future of our young nation. So they set up a school at the Union Army's Camp Shiloh in Shiloh, Tennessee, where runaway slaves and freedmen learned to read and write. After the war, the school, now known as Lincoln Chapel, moved to Memphis, where it was burned to the ground, rebuilt, and later renamed Lemoyne Normal and Commercial School, after a generous gift was made by prominent Pennsylvania physician, Dr. Francis Julius Lemoyne. In 1934, the school moved to its current location on Walker Avenue and received its charter as a four-year degree-granting institution. Later, Lemoyne College merged with Owen College to become Lemoyne Owen College. Today, the Lemoyne Owen stands as a beacon of hope in the South Memphis community and a college of choice for those students who desire the unique and transformative experience that only a historically black college can provide. Talented, diverse faculty challenge today's magicians in a rigorous course of study and liberal arts and the sciences. 
and mold them into leaders and professionals who go forth to shape the communities in which they live, work, and serve. All right, so hopefully you all got a chance to learn a little bit more about the history of our college. So just to give you a rundown of the stats of our college. So we are a smaller institution. We have an enrollment of about 900 students. Sometimes we have a little bit more, sometimes we have a little bit less, but usually 900 is our sweet spot. So the fact that we do have a smaller enrollment allows us to have a smaller student faculty ratio as well. We have a one to 12, which means that on average, you're gonna have about 12 students in each of your classes. This allows our students the opportunity to have tons of one-on-one -on -one time with their professors if they're struggling in a subject area or if they're having issues. And they're also a great networking tool for students when it comes to internships and also job opportunities as well. Because a lot of times it's not always about what you know, it is about who you know, and your professors are going to be that guide for you. We are 67% female and 33% male. We have five academic divisions and we have majors that fall under each one. We have 23 majors, eight minors, and we have 12 courses of study that lead to a teacher's licensure. So we have our business and economic development and that houses all of our business majors. Our business majors are able to take international business. That way they're able to see what it's like to do business abroad as opposed to the US. And it looks amazing on their resume. And that also lets them see what it's like to see um, business from a different perspective and what business doesn't want to be known on a global scale. So it makes them more of an asset to their employer. We also have the Division of Education. So anyone out there who is looking to be a teacher, this is a great institution because we started as a teaching institution and teaching is what we do best. And also we have those 12 courses of study leading to a teacher's licensure. So when students graduate from our institution, they're able to have their bachelor's degree and their teacher's licensure as well. We have the Division of Fine Arts and Humanities, and that's going to house those majors such as communications, journalism, art, music, and a few others. Then we have Natural and Mathematical Sciences that houses all of our math, science, and also computer science majors. And then lastly, we have Social and Behavioral Sciences, and those are going to be your majors such as criminal justice, sociology, and also social work. We do have a few special partnership programs at our institution. The first one is our partnership with the University of Tennessee Health Science Center College of Nursing. So for anyone out there who is interested in going into the nursing field, we have a partnership where all you have to do is graduate from LeMoyne and have at least a 3.0 GPA in any course of study that you like. You automatically have a seat in their nursing school and their nursing school is an accelerated program and it's only one year. Now, typically nursing school is two years, but with this partnership, it cuts it down to one year. And then it also cuts out the competitiveness of nursing school because it is a very competitive program. So all in all, you'll do five years of school and you will have two degrees. You'll do the first four at Lamorne on College and you'll have a bachelor's in whatever you choose. Typically students do go with the biology route. And then you'll have a bachelor's of science in nursing from the University of Tennessee. It really opens you up career wise, whatever you like to do. If you want to teach, if you want to stay in nursing, do research, the career opportunities are pretty much limitless. And then we have cybersecurity concentration for computer science and criminal justice majors. There are great internship opportunities for our students, not only locally, but also nationwide. And it's a very fast growing field. Lastly, we do have a partnership with ROTC program at the University of Memphis. So those students do get a chance to graduate as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army. There is scholarship money available and all of those Army ROTC classes are taught at the University of Memphis and all of your traditional courses are taught at Lamoignon College. Here I do have a list of all of our majors that we do offer in our courses of licensure as well. We also have an associate degree program. We have two different tracks. We have an associate of science, general studies, and we also have an associate of arts. Typically students who graduate from that associates program, just go ahead and roll over to our bachelor's degree program because they know that the credits are all gonna transfer over. They are already accommodated. They're already used to the students here on our campus. They're used to the professors. So we're already family. So there's no point in transferring and going to another institution. 
Next, I just want to talk about student activities that we do have on our campus. So we have over 40 different student organizations. And if there is not an organization for you, you can always start your own. There are more than enough people here who will probably be interested in what you're interested in as well. For example, we have SGA. We also have a gospel choir. We also have a campus activity board that plans a lot of the events on campus. So there is definitely a club for you. We definitely encourage students to make sure that they are getting involved on campus so that they can have a closer connection to campus. We have athletics on our campus. We are a division two NCAA. We also have Greek life as well, all of the divine nine, which are the predominantly African-American fraternities and sororities. So if that sounds like something that you may be interested in, this is definitely the institution for you. Next, I do have a video here. My dream is to graduate from Lamont with a bachelor's in biology. Um, I plan on going to pharmacy school because I really want to become a pharmacist. What I have gained from this school is that I can be anybody that I want to be. I know that I might face challenges, but I know that I will be equipped to be able to face anything that comes in my path. I feel like the people here really want you to succeed and to actually be something in life. My All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the admission requirements. What do you need in order to be admitted to Lamont on College? We're going to be looking for a cumulative GPA of a 2.0, an ACT of a 16, or at least an ACT score of an 860. And we're also going to be looking for your immunization record as well. Two doses of MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella, and also two doses of varicella, or proof that you've had the chicken pox, and one dose of meningitis. Now, if you are looking to qualify for scholarships, we are going to need a cumulative GPA of a 3.0, an ACT of a 19, and an SAT of a 980. And of course, we'll still need that immunization record. Now, you may be asking, how do I apply to your institution? Go ahead and complete our online application on our website. It is a free application, and it only takes about five minutes. Yes, it is free, F-R-E-E, -E, free. We love free. So go ahead and complete that application for us. Then you can go ahead and start submitting your documents, such as your immunization record, your high school transcript, your college transcript. If you're taking any type of dual enrollment credits, we do want to be able to give you credit for those. And then also your test scores as well. Here I do have a slide that has all of our tuition. So we do not have any out-of-state tuition. We only have on campus and off campus. And if you're looking to live off campus, it's going to be around a little over 6,000 per semester. And if you're looking to live on campus, it's going to be a little over 9,000 per semester. And that does include the dormitory and the mandatory meal plan as well. And per semester, we do have two semesters here on our campus. We have fall and we also have spring. So fall is going to be from August to December and spring semester is going to be from January to May. Lastly, I do have my contact information listed here. Also, make sure you are following us on Facebook and on Instagram. We do tons of Facebook lives with different departments and organizations here on our campus who I'm sure can answer tons of questions that you may have. And then we also do giveaways and just a wealth of great information about our institution. And then lastly, make sure you complete that free application. It is a free five-minute application on our website at www.loc.edu. Wow, I um, I learned so much that I didn't know about the school. Um, I do know that you emphasize free, <laughs> free yes. application. So you have nothing to lose. <laughs> take advantage of the free application now, and then you also mentioned um, some other things that would assist people if they were looking to get scholarships as well. So um, I appreciate you sharing that information. I'm going to take you out for a little bit. Just stick around and we'll bring you back. Okay. All right. Greetings, Mr. Scott from Alcorn University. How are you today? All is well. We are delighted and excited to join you all this evening. Thank you so much for the invitation again. Yes, we are happy that you are here all the way in Mississippi. <laughs> yes, so all the way in Mormon, Mississippi, all corn, always all corn state university. 
So, uh, yes, whenever, whenever you're ready, I can get started. You are on the floor is yours, sir. Okay. Hey, thank you so much again for the opportunity to uh, stop by and greet you all virtually in the name of all of Orange State. Uh, greetings and humble salutations. My name is Lamar Scott. I serve as the admissions recruiter and advisor for students here at Alcorn State University, where we say the grass is greener, the air is cleaner, and the water is just a little bit sweeter. Alcorn State University is also known as the academic resort. We have three campuses, one of which is located in Lorman, Mississippi, our nursing campus, um, which is going to be in Natchez, Mississippi, as well as our Vicksburg campus. With that said, we're moving um, on our way here at Alcorn State University. We always let students know up front, what does it take to be a part of the Brave family? Here at Alcorn State University, a 16 on the ACT with a 2.5 or an 880 on the SAT will get you admitted into the university. For those students with a 3. Point, I mean, with a 3.2 GPA, as long as you have your test on file, you can be admitted also. But for those with a 2.0 minimum GPA and an 18 on the ACT or a 960 on the SAT, you all can be admitted too. For those who meet the full qualifier certification or the final qualifier certification through the NCAA, you all can be admitted into this university. So moving forward, we have a few admission documents that we'll need from you. It's very straight to the point, very simple. It's not like pulling teeth here, okay? With that said, we need your application completed online. There is no application fee. We also need your ACT or SAT scores on file here with us. We need your most current high school transcript. Later on, we'll need your final high school transcript, okay? Two weeks after you graduate, we'll need that along with your immunization records with that two doses of MMR. Listen up, you guys. You can always send those documents into admissions with an S at allcorn.edu. That's admissions with an S at allcorn.edu or ASU admissions at allcorn.edu. That's ASU admissions at allcorn.edu. Once again, did I remind you that there is no application fee? So moving forward, going into our academics, we do have five schools. So you do have the School of Education, and psychology, the School of Nursing, the School of Agriculture and Applied Sciences, the School of Business, and the School of Arts and Sciences. So here at Alcorn State, some of our featured majors will include criminal justice, ag econ and agribusiness management, along with psychology, finance, biological sciences, as well as an ASN and a BSN in nursing. We do have the opportunity for students to study in a wider array of majors that include advanced technologies, child development, elementary and secondary education, accounting, mass communications, English and foreign languages, social work, mathematics, and computer sciences, along with fine arts with a concentration or emphasis in music. Here at Alcorn State University, we have no out-of-state tuition fee. At one, time we, uh, at one time, we were actually number eight on the top 10 most affordable institutions in the land. So not only do we, we soar to the top academically, on the field, but we also soar to the top when it comes to the cost of tuition, room and board. To go to Alcorn for a full year is roughly between fifteen to 20000 So it's going to all be based off of the dormitory that you will live in. As you all can see, we do have three different options for our young ladies, and we have two different options for our young men. With that said, uh, we have a dormitory named after Megger Wiley Evers, which is a famous uh, civil rights activist from Jackson, Mississippi. With that said, in his dormitories that is named after him, building A and B are for our young men, C and D are for our young ladies. We do have suite styles, whether it be four to a suite or two to a suite, okay? And then we have our female honors dormitories for young ladies that come into the institution with a 3.0 or higher GPA. With that said, those young ladies live two to each room and be separated uh, from, the other, uh, from another set of young ladies by a Jack and Jill bathroom. And then finally, we do have our more historical and uh, historical male and female dormitories, one of which is named after uh, our first ever president, Hiram Rhodes Revels, which is actually the first African-American ever to sit in the U.S. Senate. With that said, you do have Revels and Lot for our young men, Burris and Robinson for our young ladies. These are the historical or more uh, traditional style dorms. You'll stay in a room with one other person of the same sex, walk to the end of the hallway where you will have a community bathroom, community shower, and so forth. On to campus outreach, campus organizations. 
moving on to student engagement and student life here at the academic resort. We have over 60 plus registered organizations and clubs. They're broken down into four categories and they uh, begin at the academic organizations. They follow the national service-based uh, fraternities and sororities, the national Panhellenic council Greek organizations, as well as the student-led organizations that we have here on campus. So we do have students who uh, have the opportunity to come to Alcorn and start their own organizations while they are here with us. So moving forward, you all get a chance to see that we are Division One in Athletic. We compete in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, also known as the SWAC. And right now, we're soaring to the top, whether it be in football, whether it be in basketball, baseball, softball, cross country, track and field, or tennis, whatever it is we find ourselves soaring to the top because as our 20th president, our current president and our first female president, Dr. Felicia M. Nay would say, who is a 96th graduate of the university, she always states that we are the home of scholars and champions. With that said, finally, I wanna let you all know some of our rankings. As you can see, we are number, we're tied for number 36 in the top public schools by best uh, college US news, as well as in the top five percentile in biological and biomedical sciences, by College Factual, and then I'll lift up this last one. We're number one of the top 25 historically black colleges and universities for nursing schools, 42020nursingschoolhub.com. Some of our scholarships will include our university provost and presidential scholarship. We will start uh, at a 22 uh, on the ACT with a 3.0 GPA. We do have legacy scholarships for those students whose parents, grandparents, or even great-grandparents have come to Alcorn State University. And then we do have other institutional scholarships throughout the university, whether it be ROTC, athletics, band, choir, or agriculture and applied sciences. Finally, be brave and go further. We always tell our prospective students here at Alcorn State University that we have nationwide recognition for excellence in liberal arts, agricultural research, technology, music, and nursing. So on behalf of myself, my director, Ms. Katangela Tenner, who always states, we want you here at the academic resort and I always say Alcorn meets you where you are and takes you to the places that you wanna go. So on behalf of our vice president for student affairs and enrollment management, we'd like to say thank you all so much today on behalf of Dr. Tracy M. Cook, but then also for those students who would like to apply, scan the barcode, just take your cell phone, hover over that for us, Go ahead and complete the application. It takes about five to eight minutes. Very simple, straight to the point. For those students who say, hey, Mr. Scott, I want to learn a little bit more before I make a decision about even applying. Even though it's free, Mr. Scott, I want to, I want to just scan the barcode that says email listing because I want to learn a little bit more about the academic resort. Thank you all so much again. My name is Mr. Scott, and I am grateful for this opportunity. I was delighted and excited to join. Thank you for coming. Um, I invited Ms. Chanel back on as well, because what we do here at A Better Chance for You Futures Incorporated is we always like to know the success story that got you where you are today. Um, Ms. Chanel shared with me, she is not a uh, HBCU graduate, but she did tell me that she understands the culture. So we talked a little bit before we got on air. I am, I graduated from uh, Wilberforce University. Uh, so I always tell people like, look, you know, that, that school saved me from myself. So it's always enlightening for people to share their stories, how they got to where they are. So in any order that you choose. Lamar, you can go ahead and go first. So, uh, so I am a, a class of 2018 graduate of Alcorn State University. So I'll be honest, man, uh, just just like you said, Ms. Robinson, Alcorn literally saved me from me. Uh, so with that said, uh, that, that quote that I give at the end of my presentations is literally what Alcorn does for students. They literally meet you where you are. In the midst of COVID, we may not necessarily greet you with a hug uh, physically, but maybe an air hug or a brave hug is what we call it. But we'll greet you with that brave hug and on your way out, we'll be giving you that fist bump. But throughout your time here, we're all about cultivating our students. We're all about encouraging and leading our students to where it is that they want to be in the end. So I think for me coming uh, to Alcorn, it was a great opportunity. I had, I had an opportunity to, you know, uh, be a part of, a, uh, well, go ahead and join a fraternity. I had an opportunity to be a part of NCAA, uh, NAACP, as well as the NCAA, because I actually ran track at Alcorn 
in cross country. So I think Alcorn gave me an opportunity to, to uh, I guess you would say, spread my wings so that I could not only one, know that I could fly, but two, know that I could soar and do great things in life. So thank you so much. is muted um i sometimes forget to unmute myself <laughs> but um you are an athlete and you also are, are at a part of an organization as well correct uh yes ma'am uh not only was i athlete part of the organization my senior year i was the first vice for student government so yeah okay very well-rounded opportunity here at the university. Awesome. Are you from uh, that area as well or no? So I'm, ori I'm originally from Gary, Indiana. Uh, my mother's technology starts in Mississippi, though. So that's one of the reasons why I ended up uh, here at Alcorn State. Oh, that's awesome. Miss Chanel? All right. So as you mentioned earlier, it is true. I did not graduate from an HBCU. I did go to a predominantly white institution. I actually went to the state school and now I do work in a, at an HBCU. I am from Memphis, Tennessee, though, born and raised. And what I can say is that it is a dramatic difference coming from a school that was about 30,000 people to an institution that is about 900 students. It is a bit of a culture shock when I first came here. But when you come here on this campus, the people really care about you. Even just being an employee here, I see how much they care about their employees and I see how much they care about the students here. So it's a very family filled environment. As we like to say, it is your home away from home, literally. So there is not a student on campus that we don't know their names. We don't know their schedules. We keep up with them, not only academic, but also personally, because a lot of times students have a lot of things going on and sometimes they just need someone to talk to. So I can definitely say that is one thing that I have noticed here, just being at the institution. And then it has just given me a chance to really be able to explore the things that I like to do career wise. I did go to school for communication. So being a recruiter is a great opportunity for me. And then I get a chance to do a lot of social media. So I get a chance to have my hands in a great bit of things here on the campus. And so I can just say it's really preparing me for the next step in life because I'll be able to say like, hey, I've done this before and I've also done this. And it's because of the institution that I've worked at. You're on mute. I did it again. I'm on a roll with this mute. I guess I'm just so en enlightened by what you all are saying that I just don't want to talk. So um, <laughs> as I was saying is I'm glad that you put the disclaimer out there about um, the environment and how even for the staff is a welcoming environment. And what we have, is, you know, just being really transparent based off the things that's going on today in the world. Um, our, our kids need that nurturing and loving environment, um, a place that's going to check them when they're wrong. I don't know about you, but when I was in school um, and she might be watching, uh, Dr. Tanya Moore, she didn't play any games. Like she's one of them teachers. Like she gave me my first F in college on my paper. Um, I thought I was, you know, wrote this masterpiece paper in pencil. I thought I was doing it big. <laughs> yes, I played myself. But I learned so much from her. Like she let me do it over. She walked me through it. And then if I wasn't in class, she was the first one to kind of call me out on it. Like, uh, where were you at? But you in the cast and you singing or, you know. So did y'all have any of those experiences? Yeah. So for me, that, yeah, that's that's good. That's that's really good. Actually, I, I do have a, a few experiences like that, especially, you know, being a part of different organizations, being a part of different clubs. And being very involved in the campus life, you know, we only have about uh, 3,100 now uh, students as our full population. So on our main campus, we only house up to about 1,900 students. So with that said, our, our campus is fairly small when it, <laughs> when it comes to how many people are on it. So, you know, I've had to miss class, at, you know, for various reasons, whether it be SGA, for track, for fraternity, whatever it is. And... You know, um, that chewing out is different. You know, whether it's in the it was, whether it's in the next class period, or you know, it's via email, or it's text message, or even a call. You know, I had I had a professor my senior year. 
I was studying English at Alcorn. I had a professor my senior year. I had let her know ahead of time that I wasn't going to make it because of the student government association uh, activity that was going on that was taking place on campus. And even after that, she still got into my grip because I was, I, was, I was like, wow, you know, you know, but I, you know, I love Dr. Jones to death. So shout out to her, her retirement. But hey, man, she got in my grip about not coming to class. I was like, I just told you like two days prior that I wasn't going to make it, but it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. But yeah, they, they definitely, they definitely, uh, they, 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 they definitely, you know what I'm saying, make, make you discipline it, you know, so they, they, they hold you to a standard. They do. And yeah. uh, they that to the mission note, did you have that or do you deal with students now where you're like, hey, you, you slipping? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Especially now um, being a recruiter on that side. Like I know when my students are missing class, I know when they're hanging out a little bit too often in my office, it's like, why are you hanging out here so much? Why do you not have homework? Um, do you not have different things that you need to be working on? Because it's a growing process. So we need to be making sure that we're keeping up to certain standards. Mm -hmm. I, I truly get it. Uh, we are, I know you're like, goodness, time flies when you're having fun. Um, do you have any parting words before we, um, before we sign off that you could give like your best advice to um, scholars that are trying to go to one of your distinguished universities? Like both <laughs> No, no, no. I, I didn't. I didn't know if she's gonna hop in there. You know, she she's a wealth of knowledge. So uh, I, I, you know, I always yield to her. But uh, but since she she's gonna probably you know preach preach us out um, for with the clothes. But so for me, I always tell students to count the cost of their education. Literally, literally, man. Like just count the cost of your education. It's not only financially, right? You want to count the cost of your education in other areas, like the location that you'll be in. For instance, Alcorn, we're located in a rural area. Maybe, you know, um, you're more, excuse me, you're more wanting to go to a university that's in the urban area, okay? So count the cost of your education, man, because once you um, invest yourself in one place, normally uh, it's better for you to stay there unless it's just too, too contradicting to your lifestyle. But yeah, so financially, location, making sure that your major is there, and then making sure the opportunities that you need as a student are there to help you develop as a student, but then help take you to where it is you want to go in your future. So yeah, count the cost of that education uh, is so very, very, very important, okay? Thank you so much. Sorry guys, I'm messing with the screen and touching stuff. <laughs> Um, Ms. Chenault, did you have any parting words before we um, check out of here? Yeah, definitely agree with everything that Lamar said. That was some great advice. I would also encourage students to, um, when it comes to scholarships, don't just look at institutional scholarships. I know a lot of students get hooked on, what do I need to get a full ride? What do I need to get a full ride? Don't get hooked on the money that the institution has because there's only so much that they can offer to thousands of students. I encourage students to make sure that they are looking at scholarships on the local level because a lot of those are helpful as well. And it's not as much of a competition when it comes to those. And you can also stack those outside scholarships. So you can have, you know, three or five scholarships that are a thousand dollars. So that's five thousand dollars you got to put in your pocket to go towards your education. So I always advise students to make sure that they're looking on a local level when it comes to scholarships and make sure that they are stacking them. That's more important than you know, just getting those institutional scholarships. And then lastly, one of my professors when I was in college told me, make sure that you are comfortable with being uncomfortable because that's the only time you're gonna get a chance to grow while you're in college. You gotta learn how to be uncomfortable. And college is a time in your life where you're supposed to grow the most. And you definitely do not wanna graduate college being the same person that you were when you entered. That was definitely good information. I was like, wait a minute, let me register that for myself. <laughs> it's always uncomfortable when you grow. So um, I do truly appreciate both of you all coming on today. Um, I will share the information in the comments on how students can reach out to you. I guarantee you they will definitely um, probably start reaching out a little bit later because we were on early and we got done super early. Oh, I see the flag. I see you. <laughs>
Um, I, I want one of those. I have the purple one, but that one looks a little bit better than the one I have. <laughs> Thank you. So um, parents, sponsors, everybody else that uh, usually tune in, please reach out to Ms. Chenault and Mr. Scott. They are a wealth of knowledge about their universities. And most important, they said the application is free for both schools. I heard that part, free. So if you're watching on the replay, fill it out. He said it'd take about five to eight minutes. Application free. Um, so without further ado, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Thank you, Ms. Chenault. And we are grateful for you coming in on the HBCU Spotlight this week.